Talent Gateway Limited. Nine, Royal Capital Placement Limited. Ten, Jakarta Ventures Limited. Eleven, Skills Dog Limited. Twelve, Gifted Minds Tours Travel Limited. Thirteen, Tango Fox Limited. Fourteen, Alim Tayaz Travel Agent Limited. Fifteen, Rodevo International Limited. Sixteen, Flex Touch Recruitment Limited. Seventeen, Omran Ali Agencies Limited. Eighteen, Alsari International Limited. Nineteen, Leisamis Recruiters Limited. Twenty, Skyward Global Dimensions Limited. Twenty-one, Mawasalat Manpower Limited. Twenty-two, Man and Swa Recruitment Palace. Twenty-three, Kalezon Limited. Twenty-four, Abamwe Investments Limited. And finally, 25, Mastermind Ventures Limited. I also want to add... Uh, yeah. Just a minute, Waziri. <laughs> Mr. Kiri, the last time you appeared here, you indicated that Judy is operating to other agencies. Are those two agencies among the ones which Waziri has just read? Yeah, th thanks so much, Mr. Chair. Yeah, there is this, this role capital placement. Number? number number two, two. and also number nine. Okay. And uh, there are, there are other. We have Ajira Kenya also. She has another agency called Ajira Kenya. Mm -hmm. She's running it. She has about six other companies. I'm a two-year process to to register. So we have Ajira. Now, we could use the police for the final chuchin or the but she ran away. We can't let her walk away. Continue. So, okay. Mr. Kirui, what you are saying, and Waziri is here, and the director of NEA is here, mm -hmm. is that recruitment is still going on in Eldoret in fact, through proxies by the same person. Same person. In fact, member of parliament. Director, at least uh, that one was there for the director, because at least I know these members will be asking you questions whether you are aware of that. Okay. Is, okay. Can we pause there? Can, uh, let Waziri can, proceed. Can can just let Waziri proceed. On the same point, that. Uh, yeah. When people register as Listen, proxies, yes, yeah. 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 yeah, Senator. What I can comment is it possible for you to mention others company agencies that now she is operating so uh, Wasiri can hear about it if they are not here. Senator, the, she, he has already mentioned them. Yeah. We will, we will. yeah. Okay. Okay. Wasiri, proceed. I just wanted to point out that uh, when there are many Kenyans, if somebody comes and registers a company, it's going to be very difficult for us to know whether they are associated with that person. And so we cannot go denying people registration uh, unless we have proof that they are being used by this person. And in the same way, even though they are proxies, there has to be a link. And that is why that the investigative agencies need to continue. But I think the solution to this thing is that the people who are doing this need to be in jail. Because if you are eating maragwe and rice in jail, you don't have time to find proxies. And, uh, and some of these things. So I think we need to move to other... Waziri, there is no rise in jail. I've been jailed before. I didn't see it. Waziri, <laughs> <laughs> proceed. I'd like to point out as I look at the next question that uh, on this matter, I had a conversation this morning with the Director of Criminal Investigation and also had a, a conversation with the Director of Public Prosecution. Uh, who is currently out of the country. And uh, the Director of Criminal Investigation has given us, told me, he has two files, on, he has a file on two charges uh, with the DPP, and the DPP had also requested for some more information uh, to the police, which I believe has been given. So I think by Monday, you should be able to get a full answer from the DPP on when they'll move in terms of prosecution. And, and all and all these things. So okay, Waziri, on on yes, the names Senator. you've mentioned and you have them, uh, and I know the director is sitting next to you. What is the difference between number two and number nine? The same. The mistake is. Mm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I think it is a typo. It's a repeat, so it's good that you pointed it out. Huh? 
Uh, we are requesting you allow him to finish because we have questions from the fans. Okay, okay. So that we can also ask all the questions. Okay. okay. Then we ask once. Mr. Chairman, the next question was about uh, or the recommendation was that the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection mm -hmm. to audit and publicize the legitimate recruitment agents in the country in at least two local dailies with national circulation within one month of tabling of this report and annually thereafter. Mm -hmm. The list of all registered employment agencies available to the public on the National Employment Authority Information System. The list is updated on a daily basis. The Ministry of Labor and Social Protection and NEA has continued to create awareness and encourage job seekers and members of the public to check the registration station status of any recruitment agency they wish to engage. In compliance with the committee recommendation that publishes legitimate recruitment agencies in the country in at least two daily annually, an advert was placed on the local dailies on the 2nd of October, 2024. Uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members, the list changes daily because there are others whose terms expire on a daily basis who don't get renewed and they get dropped. So the best source, and I want to encourage any young person who is, who is met by somebody who says, I want to find a job for you, have a recruitment agency not to just take them at face value or to be shown an old newspaper clip, but to go to what is alive, and that is the website, nea.go.ke, nea.go.ke, because that one, if somebody has been registered today after vetting, it is shown immediately. But if you look at just a newspaper, that's two, three months ago, or a month ago, it may change, and other people have been brought in. So I, I really request that if you're looking for work, also do some form of due diligence so you can look at this. Number two, Mr. Chairman, I'm working on a system whereby we may come to a time when we may require that no employment agency charges anyone for getting them a job. And that the money that the employment agencies make should be coming from the company that has hired them to hire. So that now, for example, if a company, let's say in uh, France, needs nurses, that company in France is going to pay the agent money to get them nurses. That company should use those monies to do the recruitment, to buy the ticket and everything, and whatever remains becomes their profit. But because they want to maximize on everything and because people are poor and people are looking for jobs and desperate, they start charging and start selling. Basically, it's basically selling jobs to other people. So we'll come to a point at a time, we'll look at the regulations, to, to tell people, if you're going to work as an employment agency, do not charge. Because most of them, and it's expensive to process papers, I'm already in conversation with financial institutions. I met bankers the other day, I'm meeting more bankers, looking at financial institutions, how they can provide credit facility to these agencies to enable them to operate so that when they get their money, it's deducted so this service is carried uh, through because it is of the interest of us and everybody to be able to do this properly. So on our end, we are saying don't charge, but we're also trying to do what we can to get the banking sector to work with these agencies in a very organized manner where the government can give even a letter of comfort to the banks to say you can work with this agency. Lastly, on the same point, just to point out that we'll also be ranking agencies. Their agencies are not the same. Their agencies who are platinum agencies, who have the ability to deal with big contracts of big nature. And there are others who are just starting who don't have the ability. There are agencies who you can see who are, can be called today to go to London to sign a deal and they'll be in the flight tomorrow or in this evening uh, once they have their visa to go and sign the deal to get the jobs. There are others when you tell them to come to Kisumu for a deal, they tell you give us two, three days to Tafute Fair. So we want also to rank them so that when you are looking at them, you can see the ranking of the status of those agencies as to where they are financially and ability-wise and size-wise. And that is why I've put together a compliance section together so that uh, it's strong to to go around and vet so we can be able to give this to the public. I proceed to the next recommendation, Mr. Chairman. The Ministry of Labor and Social Protection, National Employment Authority, to strongly enforce the existing measures and ensure agencies adhere to lay down regulations. 
the ministry uh, of labor has done the following one we've set up as together an oversight mechanism and a community feedback mechanism and we have given a toll free number of 0800 222223 that is 0800 with five twos and a three for migrant workers who are outside the country to report distress issues and cases and also to report fraudulent activities by recruitment agencies and to ensure adequate awareness creation of the established mechanism at the community level 277 resource persons have been trained on the oversight and community feedback mechanism in five uh, pilot counties of Nairobi, Mombasa, Kilif, Nandi, and Busia. And the ministry intends to expand the overnight mechanism and a community feedback mechanism to all the counties. This has enabled the ministry to obtain information on rogue recruitment <coughs> agencies. I want to encourage anybody, if there's a problem, write to me directly to my office and I'll deal with it. If an agency has conned you, Please send me information with evidence so that I can also be able to follow it up. It's also pointing out that uh, there's a lot of witch hunting in this industry. There's a lot of infighting, a lot of money. So at times you see stories, you see uh, reports that are actually fake by competitors trying to pull other competitors down. But I want to carry out a very fair system, complain, give me evidence, and I'll deal with it. We'll investigate and we'll take action. Not rumors, but real evidence. The other thing we've done is that we've enhanced self-regulation among employment agencies and uh, we've asked them to form associations. The same thing that was done in the Matatu sector when we told them all to get into circles. Now we are requiring employment agencies to be member of an association that can also by themselves uh, be able to regulate self-regulation with professional conduct and we've signed and agreed on what they need to do. We are also, number three, promoting ethical recruitment. We have uh, been training and, uh, so that we can be able to adopt international standards to on how recruitment process should be done. And already we've already in, uh, trained about 18 uh, private employment agencies and, uh, no, sorry, 162 private employment agencies and on, on how to to carry out integrity, recruitment integrity, and even this training that is going on currently, even as we speak in Mombasa right now. And they are required to attend this ethical recruitment, otherwise they will lose their license. So we, we've done those things. And lastly, the licensing and uh, certification of private employment agencies. In order to streamline the vetting process, the terms of reference and operating procedure for the Interministerial Vetting Committee have been reviewed to ensure that only qualified employment agencies are licensed and that existing employment agencies have fulfilled the set out uh, criteria in law and legal notice number one. And, uh, other and lastly, we've enhanced monitoring of, uh, we've enhanced uh, monitoring of activities of recruitment agencies to ensure the private employment I was thinking to, to go back what is that uh
Snap, uh, you know, uh, we're supposed to have an office operation, so I want to make sure that this is very outside. Properly, they are not briefcase, they are not agencies, and fully operating briefcase. I want to start by saying um, the chairman of the committee. I'm going to clean up this. Uh, jobs for our people, both in our country the opportunity is great. Right now, we have in excess of half a million jobs in our system where people can go and work overseas. But they cannot work when the system is not properly proper set. I'm making it properly, properly set for both the recruitment agencies, for the government, and also for those who want to go overseas. And also sealing the loopholes that have led to a lot of the problems where the petitioner has brought these issues to the Senate. So I just want to give assurances to this House that within a year, this will be stories of the past. I submit. Thank you. Thank you, Waziri. Thank For you, Papa. So I will allow them. Not, then you are going to respond at once. So we start from there, yeah, Senator. So allow me because I want to give quorum to <laughs> delegated so okay. can go first. in the next no. room. Mr. Senator Manz has come to <laughs> to force me to go. <laughs> Thank you, Waziri, for your uh, response and also the presentation and your commitment that you are going to clean up this uh, uh, industry. My concern is that. Uh, uh, there are mechanisms for impromptu visits or inspections in those companies because some of those companies were briefcase companies where uh, the the recruiting agent is walking around. You'll be told today he's at uh, Pan African Hotel or he's at uh, High Life in uh, River Road or he's at uh, um, Royal Court in Mombasa and so on and so forth. So that uh, there are mechanisms uh, to avoid future uh, incidences like the ones that have happened with the first, uh, first choice uh, companies. Uh, number two, uh, there is also a concern that uh, apart from this calling, callmanship that goes on here, those who are going outside also, they face a myriad of problems. Yeah. They are being recruited here as uh, maybe general laborers. But when they go there, they are now put in camps. Uh, they are put in camps. And in that camp, uh, they are taken to work in the morning and coming back in the evening. If uh, on a day they are not uh, going to work, they are not paid. Yet whatever they signed here, they have been signed to go and work and will be paid on a monthly basis. So those are my concerns, and I think uh, uh, we need to address them. Uh, last time when we visited Saudi Arabia with the, the director of NEA, uh, we did see a number of them. And uh, there have been problems, like right now we have uh, uh, Steve O. He's uh, awaiting execution in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, he has been there for the last uh, 14 years. And... Uh, we try to raise funds because the, the, the family of the victim he is alleged to have killed was demanding about uh, one million dollars, which translates to about 131 million Kenyan shillings. So these problems are there, and uh, uh, it's because of the of the recruiting agents that uh, many Kenyans end up being in such problems. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Miraj, then Senator Gloria. Oh, yes, Gloria. Chair, uh, thank you, Waziri, for coming. Uh, first of all, I wanted to find out if our recommendations in the report are negotiable. Because I thought that once a Senate report is out and we approve it and pass it as a committee, it is not for negotiating with him. The first point, that is on 5A, it sounds to me that Waziri is negotiating with the committee, and I think that is not in order. I have gone through the recommendations that 
uh, in this uh, report to the Ministry of Labor, you have actually fulfilled all of them except two. So you have fulfilled E, G, H, I, and uh, you have not fulfilled A, and uh, there's a question mark on L. So, Chair, for me, I still insist, as much as you said that the Board of National Employment Authority doesn't really play a role, then we might as well disband the whole board and not have anyone earn a salary from it. But if you look at the, um, the, 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 the mandate of the board, and I think I want to take you there so that you can correct me if we are wrong, uh, you have stipulated the, what comprises of the board. So, yes, there are several people who cannot be changed. But if you go to E, where you have two youths, one man and one woman, nominated by the National Youth Council, uh, Ministry of Finance. I believe that the purpose of having a diverse board is so that part of these people in this board are able to actively pick certain issues such as these ones, and then through the board ensure that the board acts. So to me, it seems that even these people here, two youths, one man and one woman, whoever they are, they slept on their jobs. That's why we are insisting the board must be reconstituted. Then if you go to H on the board, the chairperson is appointed by the cabinet secretary. That can be changed. The chairperson of the board is not a standard person who's in the system. So why are we not looking into changing those who can be changed because those are the, the, the people who should red flag and who are supposed to interact with Raya and come back to the board and say as a board this is happening, let's act. If you look at the mandate chair of the board uh, on F, page 2, it says ensuring through the board committee and others as appropriate um, compliance obligations and functions are effective. You go further to H, it says ensuring that all significant systems and procedures are in place for the authority to run effectively, efficiently, and meet all legal and contractual requirements. And there is a failure because the legal and contractual uh, requirements, that's the reason the petitioners are here. They had a contract, they were given promises, they paid monies and, you know, they got nothing out of it and the board has a mandate that they have to ensure that these things work. The board also on J has to ensure that the authority has appropriate corporate governance structures in placing, including standards of ethical behavior and promoting a culture of corporate and social responsibility. So if you ask me, this board has failed and we, I, we are not negotiating on whether the board should be disbanded. The board should be disbanded. Disband the board, and if in the law that uh, certain members cannot change, for instance, Public Service Commission or whoever, fine, disband them, those ones will come back, but the ones who can be changed must be changed. Especially these people who are representing youth. The people sitting here, those are the youth. Why weren't they forefront in alerting the board that we must do something? So those, Chair, I still insist, the board has to be disbanded and then it has to be reconstituted again. Whether it's, it seems like a, a, a lazy affair, it has to be disbanded. What will end? Alafu when you are by law, warudi. The ones who can be reappointed, they have to be reappointed. Then, Chair, my final um, point is I have read the recommendations which I think the ministry, thanks to our new Waziri. Waziri, I can see you are really, we probably needed you here earlier. The recommendations of what they're trying to tighten on the on the um, uh, regulations and processes that are there are very they are commendable. Hopefully, it's not just theory. But one thing you have forgotten, Waziri, and I urge you to add is all these registered companies, and you have provided a list which you have gazetted the ones that are now you are saying these ones are legitimate, they can run. All of them, they have to be able to place an insurance policy or what we can call a safety deposit for each and every employee that they take out and they should not push that cost to the to the employee because then it means if you don't come back from Saudi Arabia you know and something happens to you we can go back to where they are placing the the the, the insurance or the safety deposit and then we say Miraj went to be a house girl and uh, now something has happened and we need to, we won't be fundraising. We will now be going back to that deposit that the, 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 um, 
the entity the agent has placed probably in a fixed deposit or some some place where it can earn an interest and then we can tap into that resource and say and then and and by virtue of doing this waziri all the fake agents will go because if i have to pay let's say i'm recruiting a thousand drivers and i have to pay per driver forty thousand as a sort of safety deposit or whatever for insurance i can tell you not everyone will be recruiting drivers because that will be meaning 40,000 times 1,000 drivers to make sure that it is my responsibility. After two years, when they come back, as an agent, I can go back and now say, give me back my 40,000 plus the interest or whatever, whatever, because now I want to place another person. But that is a safety mechanism that is used in human resource. I don't really know the details, but I'm sure if you engage an HR specialist, they'll be able to tell you this is what we can do. Waziri, when I, when I before my life in uh, parliament and in... in um, politics i i did not run an insurance uh, an agency but uh, we used to export talent uh, for arts and culture to europe uh, scandinavia and uh, benelux belgium netherlands and luxembourg when we realized that when they landed they would disappear and not go for the work and go and seek asylum we put a measure one of them looked a bit too strong where we said you land Instead of paying you your full one week wages, we will take a percentage. On the day you are going back, we pay you the rest. So someone would think, if I'm earning, because at that time they were earning about, uh, I would say, 900 uh, US dollars a week, and everything else is catered for. If you're earning 900 US dollars a week, and the agent says, okay, because we're in Moana, Unataka Kutoroka, or whatever, we will pay you a percentage of this. And at the end of your contract, we will deposit. The remaining amount we found that everyone would come back from europe because when they would weigh how much they're losing from what they're earning and going to seek asylum and what the asylum cartels were charging them it became a stopgap measure so we have to think about first of all why our our people engaging in crime senator faki has talked about the person who steve who is um, is allegedly up for trial and you know why are they engaging in crime? The stopgap measures there, it is, that's, that, that's the issue. Then, Waziri, you have put 200 and, uh, 277 resource people. But you have not really told us what these people are doing. This could also be another 277 agents. The one in page um, 7. In page 7. To ensure adequate awareness, uh, creation of the established mechanisms at the community level, 277 resource persons have been trained on the oversight and community feedback mechanism in the five pilot counties, Nairobi, Mombasa, Kilifi, Nandi, and Busia. I don't know why Eldoret is not here, because they are the ones who need those also. But Waziri, we need to know how much do they earn because these 277 people can easily now collude with the agents and become now literally now human traffickers. And then who oversights them? Because they, they, it, I don't know what we are trying to cure there, but we need to know. And then uh, in, in the space of oversight, what is the feedback or monitoring and evaluation that they come? Because out of 277, I hope we would have piloted this in um, Wasengisho because I'm sure maybe 30 would have come back to report the agencies that these guys are talking about, which are proxies. So we need to know like what are they doing, what is their job description, what are they earning. And, and once the pilot is done, I'm sure your plan is to scale it nationwide so that we can be able to support it and, and maybe encourage more feedback. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I think Waziri, I rarely give accolades, but I'm impressed that you have tried to do what the former CS did not do, but at least trying to be at least 20% transparent. So there is still room for improvement. Mine are two issues. One is um, I've seen you have presented uh, although you didn't go on record, I don't know why, 
agencies valid with uh, NEA, National Employment Authority Certificate of Registration. I can see you have given us 592 agencies. And in your uh, answer, you have indicated that uh, this, it keeps changes. It keeps changing with, with, with day to day because it is updated online. So I don't know whether this list, if it goes out to the public, it means that these are uh, agencies that are valid and Kenyans can use them to, 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 to apply or to work with them to ensure when they want to travel for a job or scholarship or, uh, or any other form abroad. I can see there are 592, so can you confirm this part of the bundle, whether it's part of your presentation? so that when the committee quotes as of today, as of now, this is the true picture. That will be my question number one. Number two, uh, this issue of uh, Senator Faki on Improm 2, uh, what is, uh, do we have National Intelligence Service, Wazir, NIS? It is their work to ensure that we don't need to rely to Kimutai Kirui and other activists to come before uh, Senate or any other forum and request that so and so be investigated because they are using proxies. Would it be, what are you going to put in place to ensure that NIS are on top of the game, to ensure that any individual who might have con Kenyans can be blacklisted and never allowed uh, to use proxies? Number three, you have indicated there is a toll free. Uh, line in your presentation uh, that uh, the zero eight zero zero two 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 three for migrant workers. I'm aware there is crisis. Is it in Beirut or Lebanon? Is this the toll free that can be used by Kenyans from all over the world, like Australia, uh, Middle East, Europe, Africa? So does it mean this toll-free is applicable to all Kenyans, both migrant or Kenyan Kenyan in distress, like what is happening in Lebanon? Uh, number four, Waziri, how many sanctuary camps have been established by government across the globe to assist Kenyans who are in distress, especially in Middle East? And do you have numbers of Kenyans who maybe unfortunately have died well, uh, they have been sent to agencies to Middle East and other across. So how many sanctuary cam camps that have been established to ensure Kenyans can go and find comfort and tied up with that? In these embassies that we're having challenges, are you working or uh, with the ambassadors, maybe attaching them with labor attaches yeah. to ensure there is uh, compliance? And is that labor attaches part of the people? Is this labor attaches part of the people that ensures that when our Kenyans land on those countries uh, are conversant with the local culture, the values, the laws, so that they, they are very careful? Because if you are coming from Kenya and maybe travel to a conservative country like Middle East, there is a way expected of behavior in terms even of dressing values relationship between men and women so uh, what uh, do you can you confirm to us whether these embassies have lebatages and what is their role there was as they i remember in the last uh, a few years uh, we were being told ambassadors are not supposed to go and uh, sunbathe somewhere in florida but they should look for market opportunities for mira for what so what are your labor attaches? Can, uh, how do you ensure that they give you feedback, those labor attaches? What is the output? Yeah, I think that's the correct uh, question. What is the output of these labor attaches? Because in the investigations of DPP, and I have privilege of looking at this presentation, his argument was that he's trying to look for Interpol, to try and look for companies, then they can charge the local companies that were allegedly involved in this fraud. So what is the output of this uh, labor attaches, Chairman? And finally, I appreciate that you have been a minister for over a month or so. You have indicated that there are half a million jobs. Uh, can you use this forum 
waziri to enlighten Kenyans now that these agencies have continued to con Kenyans and I still agree with Senator Orwoba that I, I think now I should be disbanded. Waziri, the reason we are here is because of mess, of mess by now, the reliction of duty, which is a criminal offense. In fact, they should be charged in a court of law. Because, Waziri, if this parliament building is broken into and it is supposed to be guided by SIPO, before you look for the robbers, you start with the officer commanding station of parliament that ensured illegal access to this building. So even as we look for people like Judy and the rest, the con men and women of this world, we must start for the oversighting agents. The fact that you have recruited 270-something resource persons to assist in monitoring what, what, what have you done as a minister? Because you are given powers, even through administrative action, to talk to us and ask the DG of Kuki what Nair did until we are in this mess. Waziri Asusit, I have buried a number of young people in my county. I know families who are broken down because they saw land to finance these fraudsters. I know young people who are treating pressure and diabetes as young as 20 years. I know of young people who are now hopeless, that they are suffering, they are taking drugs for other disorders that have been generated with this. So who should bear the greatest responsibility? It is the oversighting mechanism, which is National Employment Authority agents. And you should tell us, Waziri, what you have done about NEA. Because NEA is the oversight, and that is why when there is mess in counties, people normally ask us what has Senate done about oversight. So we must account. Finally, on the issue of government, I have a million jobs. What, what mechanisms have you put in place? Because these young people will be interested. Maybe they would want to. Is there a way government uh, to protect? Is there a way these jobs of I have a million you are discussing about? I saw you in Germany. I saw you in a number of countries in Europe and Middle East. What mechanisms are government put in place to ensure these young people can access a half a million jobs that you just disclosed? And is it easy? That's the whole point. Do we need uh, to contribute some uh, money or what is the process so that Kenyans as they walk out of this place and others are following online and other for us, they should be able to understand. But I still maintain that NEA must be called to order. If it is possible, somebody must be charged with criminal negligence. And maybe Give Waziri, us. those jobs uh, Charagi is talking about, to offer reprieve because we have now this group of people, victims. Can't we as, as, as government, and let me now say that, can't they be prioritized? Can't we see? You see, because these people were trying to go out for jobs. That was their end game. And they have been conned. And as we're trying to figure out, there are a million jobs, or a thousand or whichever, can't we prioritize this group of people in the sense that, not, not that we are saying they just be sent for whatever, but we can look at the skill set and what is up for offer so that we also show some empathy and, you know, understanding that we can start solving some of their problems. Oh, okay, was there permission before he answers. In fact, the, the, the event they were to go is World Cup. It came to an end. <laughs> it came to an end. So, in fact, now they no longer have an option. I think I agree with uh, Senator Orwoba that is there a way, we are not conversing for them, but to give them reprieve, to ensure their parents and guardians even recover from the shock of being gone. Is there a way, but I'm not saying you, 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 you don't need to disclose here. You can look for a forum on how to engage them through the contact person that I hear, I think. Thank you. Waziri, before you, re you respond, let me allow a senator who has joined us online to be on record. Senator Asige, are you there? Is she there? Senator Asige? Okay. Waziri, as you respond. Chair, yeah. 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 Just a second. Before, as you respond, I will give you a minute. I would want, I would want uh, you to also address the issue of the travel agency company, those guys who are doing the travel business and also doing the labor recruitment business because that is one of the problems where these problems arise. So, can we... A minute. To add on that, eh? thank you so much, yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's an issue I want to raise first before we continue on the issue of uh, 
these agencies, they like using state institutions to intimidate people. The latest is that uh, I'm requesting now through the chair. We should also bring the input of LSK chair because this lady is using or abusing LSK, Eldorate. The lawyer is an LSK chair and it's been focal on that effect that we have even the lawyers on our side. There's nothing these people will do. So on the issue of public interest, LSK is, I think is a body that is formed uh, through the Act of Parliament. Can we have also the chair to put to weigh in on this issue? That is that's a request. Number two, there are so many unregistered agencies by NEA in Washington. In fact, it's a waste of time saying you are going to Nandi. Eldorate has over 100 unregistered. I want NEA approval. We have Broadlink. As we speak, there are people in, I think, Dubai, nine people. Omekua hold up in the house. What were intelligence on Fatalia? We gave them that information. And they, we, we are happy. We have a good county command at the moment in Washington. We have no vice. It has no near. We have bro lane. Our near certificate. Bro, bro lane, bro lane. And then you find most of these people now on the Fanyakas in the county governments. They work with the county governments. And then I have seen your list when I was hearing. You are giving us these agencies without their offices, domiciled. Where are they domiciled? You find Ajira Kenya, or Chudi Chirchiri, is calling herself a super agent. She's an appointee of the president as a super agent. Kenya other agencies. That's what she's alleging. We have other, Kama, HPQ is domiciled in Nairobi, but it operates in Eldoret. Lakino Kengalia in a license here, Nea. So that's an issue we should also try to, what are we going to do about this? Because you are, you are giving us World Work on a license here, NEA. But there are so many agencies in this country without NEA's approval. But okay, they're operating. Uh, okay, can we so, kind of as a rule to respond? I want to respond. You are okay. You are captured. Musho on the passport issue. Why do these agencies take passports from these people? Okay, that any agency, the first thing they do is they take your passport and you pay that fee, maybe 10,000, 20,000. Why? Finally, it's posturing. Why do these agencies, these big agencies, like being in the company? Most of the time, they are around the ministers, CS, PS, and to an extent, at times, the president. But mostly, they are around members of parliament and CS and PS. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So maybe before we encourage on the issue of passport, maybe it's already even in Nandi Hills, and you saw they were also from Mwen, they were loitering the streets. Is there a law, the DG there, that when I want to travel with an agency, I must surrender my passport? Is there where any in the law? So that Kenyans who are following who are not part of this conversation, Wazir, you need to pronounce yourself that if there is any agency who you have applied and paid money, if they retain your passport, then it is illegal. Because most of these young people tell you their passports are yet to be surrendered. And when they, they, want you, they want you to give back from the agency, you must give them some money for them to return your passport. What is the position of the law and maybe regulations within the Ministry of Labor? Thank you. Okay, Waziri. I will try to be fast and then um, there was a first question about mechanism for impromptu to visit uh, by Honorable Rubafaki. So we're putting that into place. This is a new thing that I've brought in and that uh, we have started. And we are going to ensure that uh, we are able to visit all of them. The numbers used to be in the thousands. Now we only have about 500 and something. So we'll be able to take, I'll give you the right number now. Uh, so we can be able to take impromptu visits to all of them very quickly so we can rule them out. Number two, about outsiders facing a myriad of problems in camps and everything. I think there was also delineation Chair? between... Uh, Chairperson. Yes, Senator. Please, Chair, I apologize for interrupting Waziri uh, in his response. I just want to go on record kindly. I've been trying to get a word in address. Yes, so Senator, there were some technical challenges. You can come on record, please. Thank you. This is uh, Crystal Asigian, member. Thank you. 
the Sawazir, you can proceed. There is work that is done also by the State Department for Diaspora. I deal with you here. When you go overseas, the challenges you face out there are, uh, are our problem, but also the State Department of Diaspora. Maybe you need to summon them for them to give you clarity on how they handle the plight of Kenyans out there in case of war and many other things. It's not just, uh, there are Kenyans out there for many other things, not just employment. Even people on holiday get caught up in crisis. Santa Gloria asked about uh, recommendations. The recommendations are recommendations. And so it's a recommendation to the government, and the government will look into the recommendation uh, strongly. But it's also good to be fair and to point out that the company that has brought a lot of this problem, First Choice Recruitment Consultancy, and many other rogue companies were stopped from operating from 1st of February. The current board, or 2023, the current board was put into place in May 2023. It's a new board. It is not the board that was there when these problems were occurring. This is the new board that has led to all these reforms that we are looking at today. So you cannot punish people who have come in. It's like uh, your school had problems in the last 10 years and uh, rogue students, discipline problems, and then you bring now a new headmaster, then as the headmaster is trying to solve this problem, you say, to headmaster Ayende. No, you need a So, you know what I mean? Uh, it, uh, logically, it doesn't make sense that the new board, it's a new board that has come in after all these incidents. Now you have to send them away for crimes that were occurred when they were not there. It is, it is not fair. Uh, a point of order, do you have uh, that this is a new board like the Kenya Gazette? Can you provide that information? We'll, we'll be able to give you that information. Okay. And if then give us uh, the refoking of the previous appointment. But, but the DG sitting next to you, how long has she been with Nea? She's not a member of the board per se. We're talking about the board that is appointed. No, no, but, the, director, but, uh, but the board was here. <laughs> the board oversights the DG. Just tell a guy kindly allows the Waziri to yeah. No, 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 I'm just on a person. not a member of the board. She no, I know CEO. she's not a member of the board, but it's the board that oversights the entire agency. Just the, anywhere. It's the, the rule of thumb. But DG, how long have you been with the, with, 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 with Nair? Since the inception, uh, Senator. Which the inception was when? Uh, 2019. 2019. Yes. Then you when know a lot. Yes. And actually, uh, just to, uh, it's uh, you know, I have to protect my officers. I have to protect my officers. From? Yes. Uh, my madam here has been an employee of the Ministry of Labour. As just any other public. She's risen. through merit and because she understands what she's gone through and all the challenges that she faced going through she's in a very good position now to effect the changes that maybe she used to talk about and were never done so she's there and she's doing and i can vote for her i'm working very well with her she understands the the game she understands how the problems are there and how we can fix them and uh, let's give her an opportunity she just got employed as a new day managing director to prove her worth uh, point, without, of order, uh, point of order, Chair. Because it is very easy to, to... Point of order, Waziri. No, 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 why are you going to defend Waziri? No one has alluded anything. I'm just for the clarity. You're now, I was, near, now near 18. Uh, no, 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 Waziri. Can, chair, Chair, that is unparliamentary. That is violating our standing orders. Why are you anticipating something we have not said? We just wanted clarity how long has she served? And before the close of this uh, engagement, she should also go on record and tell us what she can fix. In, in yeah, this is a conversation we should have. We are not, un, unless uh, Waziri, you are doubting her capacity because no one has questioned her capacity. That's the work of Public Service Commission. Okay, Senator. It's not the work of this. Okay, so, Senator. Chair, yeah. Chair I, I just request Waziri to desist from going to that direction. Yes, Waziri. Yes. Kindly proceed. Uh, thank you, and uh, so I was saying in terms of, uh, we also have to act and not also overreact, and that is why we asked for, we begged and we requested for reconsideration. We are not telling you we are requesting. 
Uh, in terms of the insurance policy, I think it's a very good idea, and we're going to look into that. Already there is a security bond that is paid, 1.5 billion, that is supposed to cover for some of these issues. I found out that uh, the security bond has not been used effectively, as it should, to cover up uh, for some of these issues when people are called, when people are in distress, bringing back people who are injured, and etc., etc. So I'm unlocking that, uh, that process. The 277 resource people, and I think this is important, and Maybe I'm glad chair, uh, Gloria okay. Robo Maybe is here. Maybe, Waziri, just for clarity, this 1.5 billion who is supposed to provide? Is this security government? Security it's provided by the agent. Every agent. Every agent. Every agent. 1.5 billion. Million. 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 Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's too low. Uh, and I'll discuss that. We, are, we have a labor migration bill. So the labor migration bill that is going to make many changes. So have you sent it to parliament, the labor migration? Yes, yes. So you will try and improve on that? Yes, it's already been okay. changed. We are waiting. We will assist where we can. Uh, the 277 resource people are not people employed uh, as employees. <clears throat> they are community people who are actually empowered. You know, for example, how if you're dealing with a case, let's say, about... Uh, you're dealing with a societal problem, let's say, of domestic abuse. You go to the community and you have capacity building, you educate the chief, you educate the pastor, you educate the youth leader, you educate the community. So the community becomes what you, So that is what is happening. The government doesn't have the resource to employ so many people to just be looking at employment agencies from every corner of the country. But we are empowering our citizens on the ground, the leaders, so that the pastors, the, the imams, so that they can also be able to be the first ones to give us, uh, you know, to uh, sounding when there's a problem. In terms of uh, the question that you asked about uh, NEA, and that was a very good question, Senator Cherangai, about the numbers and the 592, I like to say because it is a moving number. Currently, as we sit here, the number of agencies that are authorized are 551, and the number keeps on fluctuating. Others come on board, others get dropped off because maybe they don't renew their licenses or they don't pass the vetting. Because there's vetting that is done. So after you've served for a year, you go for revetting. You don't get your license renewed. And so they are dropped, others come in. So uh, I'd like to, to point out here that uh, it is very important, and I'll talk about it, that we also play our role. The question about uh, impromptu visits uh, with St. Chirangai, that's what I say that, uh, you know, then NIS can give us, can, can, can help us in this, but it is up to us also to do our job. And so that's why I've said that uh, in my new system, I want to be able to come everywhere and get uh, this done. The toll-free line is available for Kenyans from every part of the world. The 0800-2222, that's five twos and a three, any Kenyan can call. The State Department of Diaspora is in charge of safe houses is also in charge of uh, dealing with issues of bringing people back to this uh, country. The good question about labor attaches, and I like to say that uh, our labor attaches have specific duties that they do. Uh, sourcing for employment opportunities, conducting market intelligence, initiating BLAs, monitoring implementation of BLAs, dispute resolution, coll collecting, disseminating labor information. I'm really looking at the work they do and their training and uh, I'll be undertaking a reshuffle of our labor attaches that are out there so we can inject new blood and also looking at how we can employ Kenyans who are resident in some countries to work as assistants for labor attaches. It's quite expensive to send somebody there, but it's easier to do local arrangements uh, to have them uh, work there. We also give him pre-departure, which I've stressed on, which will also include civic education so that uh, our people, as they leave the country, they know what to expect in terms of cultural imperialism, racism and other issues that they may come about. Uh, in terms of the portal and uh, the problems that are there is that uh, the half a million jobs are the jobs that are available, the agents post that have been given demand letters. Most of them cannot be posted because of the processing. And as I said, I just want to get rid of this issue where people have to be asked for money. And I'll, I'll revisit that. About this banding of NEA, NEA is, uh, is like a school, a school that is, has educated many people, 
and sent very many to university and others. But it's a school that maybe has had some challenges, about maybe 30%, 70% working very well in our country. So you don't, uh, don't kill a mosquito with a tank. You know, disbanding NEA doesn't solve the problem. It's basically getting, making sure, and I think uh, it's what Central Robo was trying to say earlier on, the government has to get its act together. And that's why I'm here, to get our act together. These issues shouldn't uh, be going on. And I can promise this committee, I'm, I'm a bit tough. I'm going to get this act together. And um, I'm going to make sure that everything is uh, streamlined. Uh, the question about we are initiating BLS, and you asked a good question about how people will know that these agencies are not the fake ones. And uh, I like to say this. If you're going to look for work, the government cannot feed, spoon feed you. You also have to do due diligence. I'm empowering you by telling you, before you work for any agency or you go to any agency, go to the website and look at whether that agent is blacklisted whether that agent is valid. If you find that agent is blacklisted, don't go there. If you find that agent is not listed in our website, we are in Mkora. Don't go with them. So you also have to, you know, we cannot, uh, you know, five million people, we can't be spoon feeding them, telling them what to do. We are providing the avenue for you to be able to do this, you know, a bit of responsibility, because there are five million people unemployed looking for work. So you need to be able to go out and do this. And this also includes, uh, the companies that uh, the petitioner mentioned, these unregistered companies, the tour agencies, it is illegal. The law says that if you operate illegally, uh, your fine is only 50,000. That's why they pay 50,000, they continue. But you're working with the DCI so that they can be arrested. We're changing the, you know, the law in the new labor migration law. When I'm proposing that they be charged five million or five years in jail. You know, 10 million, sir. You have, if you are found operating illegally, a fine of 10 million and many years in jail. So that, watch your cousin. But also, we are going to move with speed so that, um, uh, that's what I'm saying, write to me. If there is a problem, write to us. There is an agency you're working with, it is illegal. Let me know. We sent DCI on the ground to Akamate, Wakakule, Maharagwe, na Ugali. Nimesikia kuna mchere. So that, uh, so that we can go. There is no super agent in this country. No super agent. That's a con person. So there's no super agent who gets jobs from others. You work with one agency because then we are. And then we are saying, do not give your passport to be kept by anybody. Your passport can be given to an agency when they are going to assist you get your visa. They take it, they give a visa, but they should return it to you immediately. So uh, I want Kenyans to know that no agency has the permission to hold your passport or charge you money for giving you back your passport. So that should be clear. And that's why I'm getting resources put together that agencies don't have to look for money from people so they can just provide the services and get paid. There are very many jobs in this country, but uh, and even our list, but people are not aware of them. They only go to certain sections. I think that uh, we have seen majority of the problems that we are facing today and uh, challenges are from Wasin Gishu. I think the issue of employment and labor got to Wasin Gishu very fast. And people became very sharp in terms of taking people overseas in Wasin Gishu. The good ones did their job, the crooked ones started taking advantage. But it happens everywhere in the country. I am going to take the jobs on a roadshow so that we can give opportunity to everybody in our country. From Wasingishu to Machakos to Kiambu to Kisumu, and we'll go there with the registered agents. They're going to put up tents, and you'll come there, you'll go and see you're a nurse, there's a tent for nurses, you'll see a, a, a tent for mechanics, you'll see a tent for doctors, you'll see a tent for laborers, you'll see a tent for agriculturists. You go to that tent, you present your papers, and you are interviewed. If you pass the interview, you are given an offer letter on the spot. And down the line you go, you do your biometrics. If you don't have a passport, you go to next rent. There's a DCI to do your, your fingerprinting for your certificate of good conduct. So that you can go home in the evening with a letter knowing that you've gotten a job. You're just waiting now to apply for the visa to go overseas and do your medicals if they're expected of you. So I'm going to take this so because you can't expect somebody from Turkana 
from Isiolo, from Ijara, from Kabonzweni, from Nyamira, to come all the way to Nairobi to get the particular job they need because the interviews are just in Nairobi. So I'm going to take the jobs everywhere in the country to give equal opportunity to all Kenyans because they need that opportunity wherever they are. They don't have the money to come all this way just to look uh, for work. I submit, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Waziri. And I had noted that meeting somewhere, so I will allow you, but Chair, at least be, you leave, uh, leaves, some of your staff here. Chair, through you, before he leaves, because uh, I've gotten his response on my answer. Okay. Uh, may I request, uh, I'm not convinced about the board, may I request that the committee seeks a, a forum with this uh, National Employment Authority board. And if possible, because we have an engagement on 1st with the, um, sorry, on 7th with the, uh, with ODPP, if that board can, if we can have an engagement, because I'm, uh, Waziri, I'm not convinced, I'm sorry. I just, uh, I just want to be convinced as, as a member of this committee that the board is actually doing something. Uh, and then the, the law, he's talking about a, a law. You keep referencing a bill that we are changing. I have had a bill in this parliament forever. So my suggestion is, as we are waiting for that law to pass, can you use the avenue of regulations? Can, can your ministry table regulations that are effective immediately to the committee of delegated legislation, which I sit in, because that is that can cure some of the problems now. Yeah. Chair, Chair maybe two okay, clarifications, uh, Waziri, before, and I would request before Waziri leaves also, you'll give petition at least one or two more minutes so that as he goes, he goes with feedback. Uh, Waziri, on the issue of 277 resource persons, do you give them stipend, number one? Number two, on the working with the uh, local, you know, Kenyans have, and you are a diasporian, you have been a member of diaspora. I know that that's another department altogether. There are many Kenyan associations within when you travel to London, to US, to, is there a way you can uh, work with them so that they are able to get you individuals that uh, can be of great help? And then finally, on the issue of uh, uh, these agencies you, you didn't come clear on the opportunities as a ministry because i know they have a million jobs we are talking about do you have a structure maybe through ngao because uh, my, my my people elected me the access to internet is less than 10 percent is there a way you can work with the chiefs because that's the near or sub location chief so that if there are opportunities in German where you were the other day, there is a way we can encourage our people to work to the local assistant chief or chief and obtain the information on opportunities. I like how you are approaching by saying you will not uh, make sure, because some of these young people don't have 1,000, 2,000 shillings to travel via shuttle to be in Nairobi. So have you sat with the Ministry of Interior to work with national, uh, even in Nyandarwa, to work with Ngao, so that uh, those people can, 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 can access the information there. And then number two, Waziri, on the issue of ICT hubs that the president is pushing to have across the 290 constituencies, are you going to work with those ICT hubs to ensure the young people access within the uh, ICT? Waziri, the, the elephant in the room is what we call bank statement. I know the, the issue of labor and academic scholarships. As a ministry, have you ever thought, I, I, I heard you talk about the letter of comfort, especially to Kenyans who are traveling. There was the issue of nurses uh, to being taken to UK and other places. Will it be possible to extend this letter of comfort? I don't know, with the Ministry of Education, you can have a discussion in terms of letter of comfort, because most of these young people, they want to go and work and study. And I know you are a beneficiary of such arrangement where you go and work as well as study. Is there in your letter of comfort to ensure that because most of these young people come with Shmua, this idea, bank statement, the, the, the embassies don't agree with company statements. What, what, what have you put in place? Thank you, Chair. Well, that would be my final. And I request before you release Waziri, at least give one or two youth people, uh, DJ and Z, Wasemekitu, and then uh, Wazitu Salamia Badai.
Kirui, I will be very strict. You choose two, two minutes each. Like you see your way. Yeah, choose two, two minutes each. As I come, let me just uh, answer to. I, I like your idea. For it, and one of the things we're doing is entering PMS that allow our people when they go overseas to study and also work. And that's an arrangement so that immigration can allow them uh, to be able to take those things. And yes, working with Ngaos, we have 30 NEA offices in 30 counties. I'm rolling them out 47. And they'll have the website and everything. You can actually go there and process your papers from that uh, county without having to come to Nairobi. So, you know, devolution has to work. Yeah. And, and also working with Ngao and empowering them. That's why we are using Ngao officers as part of the compliance. Part of the compliance, they'll also be teaching people. When somebody goes to the chief about uh, this, the chief will be telling them, look, this is where you get information. So they can also empower people to get the right information. Thank you. So, Kirui, two minutes each. What about the letter of comfort? I will discuss it with the Minister of Education. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Chair. I would like to face a... Good afternoon. I'm Viola Makan. I'm from What I want to require about the committee, I want to beg or request the committee. First, we want this lady to be arrested. At least our hearts will be itatosheka. Secondly, to kisaidi wana kazi here, we really appreciate. Thank you. Uh, if I can respond, because that point came up about yes. uh, opportunities for these young people. Yes. And I'm going to set up a structure to see how we can also be able to show them the new opportunities that are there. So at least they don't lose uh, everything. About the lady being arrested, I think I'll wait for you to give your notice. And I'll personally uh, intervene from where I am with the national government with the police to actually, uh, the DCI, I'll inform them. Copy. So Two minutes. Oh, thank, one. thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Kenneth Kimtai, a victim. Uh, I only have two points. Uh, first is a request, a follow-up request, which in your answers, which uh, had been uh, uh, asked by Honorable Gloria and supported by Honorable Chairarigay. Buona uh, Waziri, as a way of showing empathy to us, as a way of wiping tears in our eyes, as a way of giving us a second hope in life, in these bilateral agreements that you have in your, in your ministry, and recently we, we saw in Germany, uh, please consider us, uh, give us priority. We will really appreciate. By so doing, you will have given us a light, you will have given our families a smile, and we, really, we will really appreciate. I know you are a good person, I know you have a good heart, and you will help us. Uh, finally, uh, Chair, is to this committee. I must thank you, Chair, and Honorable Chararagay and Honorable Gloria. Uh, specifically you, you have shown passion and interest in advocating for us. Uh, 